The whole thing really started in 2002 when one of the grantees of my foundation, Global Witness, came up with the idea of um, holding mining and oil companies responsible for disclosing the payments they are making to the governments so the governments could be held accountable, civil society could hold them accountable for how they are spending their money. We found a catchy phrase for this, publish what you pay. The background to establishing the National Oil Corporation was to help stabilize oil prices. In mining, we don't have information, we don't have uh, enough regulation. On paper, Angola has a very strong rule, but in practice it is uh, poorly executed. The quality of the lecturers were amazing. I think we had Mr. Professor Collier, he's a top-notch economist. I think just having a couple of hours session with him and just to understanding his viewpoint and then uh, it was pretty interesting. It's sensible to invest at home, but, and this is the very big but, one reason why a country like Sierra Leone is so short of capital in the country is that Sierra Leone lacks the capacity to invest well domestically. And if you try and spend without having built the capacities to invest well, you get a tragedy. Well, you better get the skills. Build the skill sets to manage the investment process. And that's what I call investing in investing. In this moment, there are several big extracted industries, mining and oil projects that are under development. And I feel that when I am back in my country, I will be able to use the knowledge. Sierra Leone has an unfortunate experience about resource management. We've got huge deposits of natural resources, but management of these resources have not been very helpful over the years. As Kenya prepares the ground, the legal framework and procedures and mechanisms for mining, I expect to make a contribution. In, in, in that regard. But I really want you guys to think against type. In other words, if you're a committed civil society uh, NGOist, I want you to become the oil company and really sort of try to get into the reasoning of the other uh, stakeholders in, in, in this mess. So the exercise is, is really about this, determines how much oil revenue the government will save and spend. The PIH rule calls for 3% of oil wealth. I come from Africa. And the capacity, even in government ministries, is not always, uh, this is not value judgment, it's not always uh, the best. And I think colleagues with whom I collaborate in various ministries, I will also recommend the cost to them. If what you want is $50, is independent of the contractual structure, I can get you $50. What is different under these regimes, how the risks are borne, between the contractor and the government with respect to changes and unanticipated changes in prices and cost. So where do we start the... Uh, well, I mean, that's a matter of your interpretation, but, right. but my interpretation is you take 11 years. With the new policy, there's a tendency for you to encourage growth in the other sector. Okay, yeah. Plus five years of the past, which are all zeros. You add them all together, divide by 11. The biggest problem now is how to gain China's cooperation. And I think it will probably only be solved if you change EITI, which has actually, in my judgment, has largely reached its, its objective and uh, could easily be sacrificed for the sake of another structure where the Chinese would be involved in designing it. Because I don't think that we will be able to get them to accept uh, what they regard as a Western colonial effort. They have to be involved in designing it and then they might uh, participate.